Good afternoon, folks. This is Carl, your ticker guy, coming at you from sunny Niceville, Florida. I want to talk to you today about market manipulation and the kind of stupid crap that went on again today and, in fact, has been the feature of the market for the last three or four days. Supposedly, we were told that Lehman was going to pre-announce their earnings. Okay, This was the story that came out, that there was going to be an early earnings announcement for Lehman Brothers. And the reason is that Lehman has had its stock chopped. All right? And as you can see from the chart here, that is not a lie. That is, in fact, what has happened. Lehman has had their, their stock has just been absolutely pummeled. Okay, that's all fine and well. But here's the problem. All right? The night before the supposed release, we got treated to yet another rumor. Now, for months, there have been rumors flying around that the Korea Development Bank is going to buy Lehman. There apparently have been some conversations that have taken place between the two parties. But KDB is run by the Korean government. And the South Korean government has come out and said, not too long ago, that there's no deal. That there's just, there's just no deal. That you know they, they had some conversations, but they're not having any more. And in fact, they went so far as to say that there were some questions about valuation. And that's a polite way of saying we don't believe what you think the company's worth. All right. So the night before this supposed pre-announcement, everyone's expecting to hear some kind of plan about how Lehman's going to deal with the fact that they're losing quite a bit of money. And this is not a surprise. They wrote a lot of crap paper. They were sponsors for a lot of securitization of mortgages, both in commercial and residential property. They haven't worked out very well. And they're bleeding badly. Uh, they have enough liquidity and enough money to probably survive for quite a long while. But if they can't earn anything, it doesn't make any difference. And eventually, people get a little unhappy with their cash position and start moving their accounts. This is what happened to Bear Stearns and ultimately sunk them. So what they are desperate to do is to avoid a Bear Stearns kind of scenario from developing. And as a result, what has happened now is that there's, you know, they're, they're out there talking to people, and that's perfectly okay. But the night before this release, right around midnight, all of a sudden, the S&P futures go bananas. And on Bloomberg Television, as well as several wire services, we see headlines pop up that say the Korea Development Bank is buying Lehman. Well, now that's big news, but only if it's true. About half an hour later, there's an official denial from the Korean Development Bank. It says, we're surprised to hear this. And the government says, no. Right? But you know what? Market Watch, Streetwise, all these guys... All of these supposed news organizations, they all run on these automated crawlers. Nobody actually verifies anything anymore. If it shows up from one reliable, supposedly reliable source, it gets picked up and put everywhere. The problem is the denials didn't get picked up and put everywhere. More than an hour after I first saw the denial from Reuters, Bloomberg was still reporting it on television. And it was still showing up in new places. The street.com picked it up, MarketWatch picked it up. It kept popping up in all these different news services. But it had been officially denied, and the denials were not picked up. So we come into the morning with the futures radically elevated from where they should have been on the strength of a rescue, a voluntary rescue. Somebody thought there was value in this company that the market has driven its stock price now down nearly into the single digits at this point. The earnings release comes, and there is no deal. The only thing that is said is that, you know, we're looking at our alternatives. We're trying to figure out what to do. Well, although what's likely to do is you're going to have to split the bank up into multiple different entities, and maybe you sell off some of it to your shareholders if you can get them to pay anything for it, that holds all this trash paper, and you hope it works out. And if it doesn't, well, you know, then those people who buy those shares lose. That's a perfectly acceptable alternative. So is trying to find somebody to buy you. If you can find anyone, they'll give you anything. But it, and instantaneously, folks, as soon as this happens, the futures crater. The market goes back to where it was before all the stupid rumors started. Now, here's the problem. A couple of days ago, there was an, apparently a journalistic accident, an old story about United Airlines going bankrupt was accidentally put on the news wires. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how you can possibly do that, but it happened. The dateline had gotten changed, and it got out into the system. Google picked it up. Everybody else picked it up. All of a sudden, it shows up on Bloomberg and on CNBC that United Airlines is filing bankruptcy. 
In fact, United Airlines did file bankruptcy a bunch of years ago, like six, seven years back. All right, so it's a regurgitation of an old news story with a new dateline on it. As soon as that gets picked up, the stock craters. Essentially goes to zero, okay, loses almost all of its value, and uh, that's what you'd expect. People would sell it instantly because if the company goes bankrupt, the stock probably is a zero. It turns out that it's not true. All of the trades that were made based upon that bad information stand, which means that if you sold your United Airlines stock, which was in the double digits, and you ended up selling it for four or five bucks, that's just too damn bad. You took a 50% loss for absolutely no reason or more. Those people who bought it for four or five dollars, hey, they gotta be happier than a pig in shit. But, remember guys, the market is a zero-sum game. If you got a great deal, I got screwed. And if I got a great deal, you got screwed. Now, when it's when the screwing is because your analysis is wrong, when I think that Home Depot, for example, is a dog crap company, and they're going to lose money because housing is overextended, and as a result, I sell my Home Depot stock, and you buy it from me, even though you don't see me, this is how it works, okay, there's only so many shares, they trade hands. And I'm wrong, I lose money because the stock goes up, you get the profits, and I don't. That's okay. If I short a stock because I think it's going down, and it goes up instead, well, you know, if it's because the company really is doing okay, I lose money. It's the way it goes. If I make a good call on a stock, and you make a bad one, and we're on opposite sides of the trade, I make money, and you lose. That's the way the market is supposed to work. But it is a felony to spread false rumors. A felony, folks, to start these things. This has become what the market is now about. Over the last couple of months, there have been rumors of emergency rate cuts. There have been rumors of Warren Buffett buying half the planet. This was particularly popular with the home builders last year. Now we have rumors about Lehman being bought out by God and everybody. All, right? All of them false up until now. And this afternoon it happened again. With 10 minutes before the market closed, rumor comes out on the tape that Bank America is going to buy it. Well, I hope Mr. Lewis isn't stupid enough to do that. If he is, I'm going to short Bank of America. But, here is the thing. Again, it jams the market. 15 points on the S&P 500, straight up. More than 1%, about 1 and a quarter percent. Straight up from where it was. Now, is there anything to this? I don't have any way to know. But whether there is or not, it's against the law, folks, to trade on un known, undisseminated, non-public material information. And to intentionally start rumors like this, or to trade on information that is true that hasn't been disseminated like this, is a felony. Chris Cox, the chairman of the SEC, is now looking into the United Airlines rumor that cost a bunch of people a lot of money. Why isn't he looking into all these layman rumors? Why isn't he serving subpoenas on some of these people? Why is it that it's only when stocks go up that it's okay to start rumors about things. We can start all the rumors we want as long as the rumor is that somebody's being bought and that good things are going to happen. But if we start a rumor that somebody's going out of business, like for example when Bear Stearns did, that needs to be investigated. When we accidentally put a story on the newswire that United Airlines is going out of business, that needs to be investigated. But there's no investigation the other way around. folks. This is crooked, and it's time for us to say enough. Write Chris Cox. Go over to enforcement.sec.gov and demand, demand that he do something about this crap. They have a comment page that you can put things in and requests into him. I suggest you do it today. We don't have a market left. We now have a casino where everybody sitting at the poker table has an extra pair of aces up their sleeve, and all we're really trying to find out is who can slip the aces out of their sleeve first without being noticed. Have a good day.